In this video, we're going to take a look at solving one-step inequalities. If you're comfortable solving equations, solving inequalities is very, very similar. There's just a couple little things we have to be on the lookout for, and we'll see what we can do with those as they pop up here in these four examples. So, in solving one-step inequalities, remember, when we're asked to solve something, that means that we're going to get the variable by itself. So our first step, locate that variable, see what's hanging out with it, and we get rid of whatever's hanging out with it by doing the opposite, using inverse operations. So, let's take a look at this first one. Here we have 10 plus x. We want to get that x by itself. And to do that, well, we've got a 10 there. How do we get rid of 10? We're going to do the opposite. Subtract 10, because that's a positive 10. So remember, if we do something on one side, we have to do it on the other side. And that's to maintain that inequality in this case. So then we simplify. The 10s are gone, because we did the opposite there. And what's left? We've got an x. So we have x is less than. And we have 6 minus 10, well, that would be negative 4. So x is less than negative 4. Now, sometimes you're asked to graph these on a number line. I'm going to leave that for another video. We'll just focus on the solving part today. But if you want to check and make sure that your answer is correct, what you can do is plug in a value that makes this true. So x is less than negative 4. What's something less than negative 4? Negative 5 would be less than negative 4. Plug it in. We'd have 10 minus or plus negative 5, which is 10 minus 5, which would be 5, which is less than 6. So that works. Okay. So you can do that checking as well. Let's take a look at this next one down here. Now, for this one, what we're going to want to do is, again, Focus in, find that variable, and then get it by itself. So here's the x. We're going to go ahead and get rid of whatever's hanging out with it. So we've got a minus 9. What's the opposite of minus 9? Plus 9. So we're going to add 9 here to get rid of that minus 9. That's our goal. Now since we did that here, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So plus 9 over here. 14 plus 9 is going to give us 23. And then just bring this stuff straight down. And here's where we need to be a little bit careful with inequalities. Notice I just brought everything straight down. Well, it's pretty standard to write the variable first. So what I need to do is take the x over to this side. And I'm going to put the 23 on this side. Now, i got to change this because this is saying 23 is greater than or equal to x. Now here... I need to say that same thing. So the way that I flip these around, we can just remember, OK, I got to flip this around as well, so like that. But just a quick little double check. Make sure that it's one way that uh, inequalities are often talked about is by eating up the big number. See how it's opening up to that number right there? Just make sure it's eating up the same number. So here it's eating up the 23. Here it's eating up to 23, so we know we've written it correctly. Be very, very careful when you flip the sides, the um, things that are on each side of the inequality. Make sure that you change that inequality when we go from here to here. That's something that get mi gets mixed up sometimes, so be very, very careful with that. All right, then let's go up top here and take a look at this next one. For this one, here's another thing that we have to be aware of when we're solving inequalities. And that is if we divide or multiply by a negative number on both sides of the inequality, we need to flip the inequality symbol. So in this case, we've got negative 12 times x is greater than or equal to 2. Oof, yeah. So that negative 12, it's times so to get rid of it we're going to divide we don't want to add because this is multiplication between these two sometimes people want to try and add that that doesn't help us we want to break those two things up by dividing so we're going to divide by negative 12 and divide by negative 12 now I divided by a negative on both sides so that means I need to flip my inequality symbol so this becomes less than or equal to 
bring down what's left here. This is gone. We've got the x left. Then on this side, there's a fraction sitting there. 2 divided by negative 12, that's going to be negative 1 sixth. Remember, I can write that negative anywhere on that fraction. I can write it on the top number, out front, or on the bottom, not on both. So there's my solution to that one. All right, then let's take a look at this last one here. In this case, we have a situation where there's our variable. What's going on between the variable and that stuff? What's well, division? What's the opposite of division? How are we going to get rid of that divide by 2? Multiply by 2. So we go ahead and multiply by 2 on both sides of our inequality. And in this case, be careful. Here's a negative, and sometimes people say, oh, i got to flip the inequality. But wait, we multiplied by a positive number on both sides. We did not multiply by negative on both sides. That negative was sitting there, but that one doesn't make us flip the inequality. So be very careful about that. So let's simplify this. We have 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Then we're not going to flip the inequality, so we'll just bring it down like so. What's left over here? Just an x. Now, we do need to write it with the x first, so I'm going to flip these two things around. Then, remember, what do I have to do with this? Well, I need to make sure it's eating up or opening up to the same thing. It's opening up to the x here, so I need to make sure that that's the case down here, like so. And there we have it. So, solving one-step inequalities, process very, very similar to solving equations. The big differences are when we multiply or divide by a negative on both sides, we have to flip that inequality symbol like we saw here. And be very careful as you write your answer. Make sure that you write it with a variable first and remember our process. We have to make sure that it's opening up to the same thing when we rewrite it with the variable first. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working harder on your math. You can do it.